In light of Prime Day happening this week, hopefully you guys were able to pick up on some sweet deals. But if not, I have three great dividend stocks for you guys today that are on sale. The reason I picked these, first of all, each of them are close to their 52 week low, which means they're at a discount right now. Also, they are all in the S&P 500 and are dividend aristocrats, meaning that they each have consistently grown their dividend for the last 25 years and are giving value back to their shareholders. And speaking of dividends, they each have a dividend yield above 2.5%, which is above average compared to other dividend stocks within the S&P 500. And they have steady free cash flows to support that dividend. So let's jump right in. First stock I have for you guys is Metatronic, ticker symbol MDT. Metatronic is a medical device company which engages in development, manufacture, distribution, and sales of device-based medical therapies and services to hospital, physicians, clinicals, and patients. Now there are four different business segments of Metatronic, which are cardiovascular, medical surgical, neuroscience, and diabetes operating unit. Now in their last earnings, they did have a setback with their diabetes operating unit, having some issues with safety and some of their products. However, with their other three sectors, cardiovascular, neuroscience, and medical surgical, they are still looking forward to having steady growth in this coming up year. And with that, they also announced that they're increasing their dividend by 7.9%, as you can see here. So that'll give you a quarterly payout of 68 cents. Now from the start of the year, Medtronic has fallen about 17% to their current share price of $87.91. And looking over here, they are very close to their 52 week low of $86. Right down here, you can see that their current market cap is $117 billion. And they have a current PE of 15.89. Looking down here, since they're increasing their dividend, now their forward dividend yield is 3.07%. And they'll give an annual payout of $2.72 with a payout ratio of 44.84%. And for the last five years, they have grown that dividend at a rate of 8% and have continued to grow that dividend for the last 43 years, making them a dividend risk crap. And look right down here, as long as you have owned the stock last month, you'll be getting a dividend payout this month. Now over on the income statement, looking at their revenue, you can see here that the revenue has stayed pretty stable for the last couple years around that $30 billion. So they are a large medical device company, so they're not going to be growing at a fast pace as some other upcoming companies are but the good thing is that they are staying pretty stable right here and they're not decreasing in revenue so scroll down here for their net income to see what their profit are so looking right here similar to their revenue growth they are staying pretty stable as you can see for the last five years so the good thing is you see they're increasing they had a setback right there which is understandable because of everything in 2020 but it looks like that they are slightly increasing which is good so they had the 3.1 billion there we had 4.8, around 4.8 there, and now 5.04. So that's good to see that they're not declining in profit either. So right down here, we're going to look at their shares outstanding. Now with shares outstanding, you want to see that they're buying back shares, but only buying back shares when their share price has decreased. Because we don't want them to use in some of their free cash flow to buy expensive shares. So right down here, you can see that they have slightly bought back shares from the last couple of years, keeping pretty stable, as well as slowly buying back some. So that's good that they're not diluting the shareholders. I did mention free cash flow. So right here, we're going to be looking at what their free cash flow is. So scroll down here. And how you calculate free cash flow is your cash from operations, which is this line right here. And minus your capital expenditures, that line right there. And that'll give you what your free cash flow is. And looking here, just like the revenue and net income, they are staying slightly stable with their revenue and around the average of $5.27 billion. With free cash flow, the company can do five things, which are pay dividends, which dividend investors, that's what we're here for. Buy back shares, which you saw they are slightly buying back shares. Pay down debt, make acquisitions, and also reinvest back into the company. So with this average of 5.27 billion, let's go see how many years it'll take them to pay off their long-term liabilities if they chose to do so. Right now I'm over on the balance sheet. I'm gonna scroll down here to long-term liabilities. And you see right here, the long-term liabilities is 25 billion. So in about five years, they can pay off all of their long-term liabilities if they chose to do so. So that's a good sign that they're not incapable of paying off their liabilities in a 
appropriate amount of time. Now that we looked at their fundamentals, let's compare them to others in their sector. As I did mention, there are large companies, so they're gonna be growing slower than others in their sector. So Seeking Alpha here for revenue growth gives them a grade of D, having a ratio of 3.87%. That is about 75% lower than the rest of their sector and could be due to some of their setbacks with the diabetes operating unit. So that is something to consider. Right on here for their long-term growth, they have 9% compared to the 12% of the rest of their sector. So about 25% less than that. However, looking at their profit right here, Seeking Alpha gives their net income a grade of A minus. So they have 15.98% ratio compared to a significant difference of their sector, which are in the negatives right now. And also their gross profit right here of 68.35%, which is 23% higher than the rest of their sector. So that's good for Metatronic right there. As far as valuation, Seeking gives their PE value grade of B, having a value of 15.89, is about 15.5% lower than the rest of their sector. One other thing for their PEG, and what PEG is, is basically your price per earnings divided by the long-term growth that we looked at earlier. And with this, you wanna see a company's value as close to one being their share price at a fair value. Anything lower than one, the company could be seen as undervalued. Anything greater than one, they could potentially be seen as overvalued. So right here with a value of 1.77, it is closer to that fair value price target that we're looking for. And over here, looking at analysts' price target, they're considering Metatronic as a buy right now with a rating of 3.96 out of five. And scrolling right down here, we can see that their low price target is $85, which is about $3 less than what the current share price is. And their average share price is $112. Just to take an account of what I'm viewing as a fair price value, I just put in some conservative values right here. Looking at their revenue growth, they're gonna be slower growing. So I just put a range of three to five right here and then for the profit and free cash flow i'm keeping it around the same of what their historic values are and then for pe and price to free cash flow i'm going for a range of 14 to 18 with a return rate of 10 percent so with all these assumptions scroll down here you can see with their current share price of 87 dollars and 69 cent they are close to what i have as a high right here 81 dollars so i am looking at medtronic as being a a fair value than it has been in the past because the share price is coming down. So it's getting closer to the fair value with my rate of return being 10%. Next up is Emerson Electronic, ticker symbol EMR. And they are a global technology and engineering company which provides innovation solutions for customers in industrial, commercial, and residential market. Now Emerson has three different business segments which are automation solutions, climate technologies, and tool and home products. Now, climate technologies and tool home products are comprised underneath commercial and residential solutions business. One thing with Emerson to give buyback to the shareholder, they are making share buybacks as well as acquisitions. We see right here, they did make a deal last year with Epson Technology, basically to have them focus on growing their industrial software segment. With this uh, deal, they'll have 55% stake in there and should provide free cash flow and profitability metrics, having it in Aspen Technologies. So from the start of the year, they have fallen about 14.5% to their current share price of $78.34. See right over here, they are very close to their 52-week low, which was $76. Right down here, they have a market cap of $47 billion with a current PE of 15.64. Their current dividend yield is 2.61%. Will give you an annual payout of $2.06. And for the last five years, they have grown that dividend at 1.37% and been growing that dividend for the last 64 years, making them not only a dividend aristocrat, but also a dividend king. So over on the income statement, looking at its revenue growth, we are seeing the last couple of years, they are staying pretty stable like Metatronic. They have had an increase looking a couple of years back. So they had 14 billion, 16 billion. In the last couple of years, kind of bouncing around this 8 billion here. And right there, there was a drop, but that's understandable. So currently it's $18.91 billion. Scrolling on here to their net income. So their net income has slightly increased from the last couple of years. So we are at $2.87 billion. The last couple been around the 2.3, 2.1. So that's a good sign that they're slowly increasing their profitability. Once more scrolling down to their shares outstanding. 
And you can see here, they are buying back their shares, 614 million. And right now the current is 593 million. So that's a good sign too, especially since their share price is dropping, that they're buying back their shares at a discount. Over in the cash flow, scroll down here to look at their free cash flow. We do see that their free cash flow stays around that $2 billion, $2 billion range. We did have a, a spike up right here, but the average for the last five years has been $2.4 billion. So let's go see if their average can pay off their long-term liabilities. Over in the balance sheet, scrolling right down here to the long-term liabilities. You can see here, they're $10.81 billion, so about four and a half to five years, they could pay off all their liabilities if they chose to do so. Over on the growth tab, Signal Alpha gives their revenue growth a D plus, having a ratio of 7.69%. That's about 28.5% lower than the rest of their sector. And right down here for their long-term growth, with a ratio of 10.79%, that's about 10% less than the rest of their sector. Profitability-wise, they're looking pretty good with a grade of A minus. So with a ratio of 15.16, they're over 100% compared to the rest of their sector. Right over here for their gross profit, with 41%, they're about 38% higher than the rest of their sector. So that's looking good for Emerson right there. Over on valuation, just looking at their PE value here, seeing off gives them a grade of C. So with a 15.64, they're about 6.5% higher than the rest of their sector. And as far as PEG, they have value of 1.45, which is slightly higher than the rest of their sector, but is closer to that value of one that we're looking for for a fair price value. Now, Wall Street analysts are considering Emerson as a buy right now with a rating of 4.12 out of 5. And scrolling right down here, you can see that we're just below analysts' low price target of $80, and their average price target is $104. Right here, looking at my own assumptions. So I have a revenue growth range of 3 to 5. Once again, for the profit and free cash flow margin, I kept around this the historical values right here. My PE range and price to free cash flow range, I get the same as with Metatronic, so 14 to 18, and the same 10% return. So scroll down here with the current share price of $78. We are right underneath my high assumptions. I do see Emerson as being a fair value based on these assumptions, and also compared to what the analysts see as a low price target. Definitely a good buy on sale. So out of the three companies I'm sharing with you guys, the next one I do have in my own dividend portfolio, and I have been watching and waiting for that share price to drop so I can add to my position at a good value. Before I get to that, let me know if you're finding value out of Metatronic and Emerson by smashing the like button. And if you wanna lightly tap it, I'll accept that as well. This company is Caterpillar, ticker symbol C-A-T. They are a manufacturer of construction and mining equipment, diesel and natural gas engine, industrial gas turbines, and also diesel electric locomotives. Now the company does have four different business segments, which are construction industries, resource industries, energy and transportation, and also financial products. It was with financials and also other services in that industry. Now one good thing with Caterpillar, they have announced that they're increasing their dividend by 8%. Also have a history of managing their decline in revenue, while also having a steady stream of free cash flows so that they can support the dividend payout to their shareholders. So that's a good sign kind of moving forward that they do have that history of being able to continue paying that dividend. Looking at the start of year, Caterpillar has fallen 16% to a current share price of $173.87. Going over here, they are very close to their 52-week low of $169. Down here, you can see their current market cap is $93 billion with a PE of 14.05. As for dividend, their dividend yield is 2.75% which will give you an annual payout of $4.80. Their pay ratio is 41%, and they've been growing that dividend at a rate of 7.5% for the last five years. And I know right here, seeking out for this show, a dividend growth of only one year, but they are a dividend risk crap, and I've paid that dividend for 28 years. So over on their income statement, looking at their revenue growth. Now, as you can see here, it is kind of rocky between that 45 billion and 50 billion dollar range, and Scroll down right here for their net income. Reflecting their rocky revenue stream, they are going to have their profit go up and down as the revenue does. Now we do want to see if they're buying back their shares. So scrolling right down here, we can see here for the last five years, they had 598 million and currently they have 
534 million. So they are buying back their shares. Right in here, as far as their free cash flow, so we'll scroll down right here. You see their five year average is $3.76 billion. So with their up and down, their profit, of course, their free cash flow is going to go up and down as well. But even with their up and down free cash flow, they are still managing with their long history, being able to sustain their dividend payout as well as buy back shares. So they are continuing to give value back to the customer and being able to manage the company as well. And with that $3.7 billion, let's see if they were to pay off their long-term liabilities, how long that would take. So scroll right down here for the long-term liabilities. They have $35.65 billion. So it's going to take nine to 10 years to pay off all their liabilities if they were to focus on that. Now looking to compare what their fundamentals are to others in their sector. For their growth revenue, Seeking Alpha does give them a grade of B minus, having a growth of 13.90%. That's about 30% higher than the rest of their sector. So good job, Caterpillar. And right down here for the long-term growth, ratio of 18.11%. That's about 51% higher than the rest of their sector. As far as probability, looking at their net income, Seeking Alpha gives them an A minus with a ratio of 12.32%. That's about 86% higher than the rest of their sector. And looking at their P value, Seeking Alpha gives them a C plus with a value of 14.05, about 4% less than the rest of their sector. And right on here for their PEG with a value of 0.78, about 40% less than the rest of their sector. So right here, Wall Street analysts are looking at Caterpillar as a buy with a rating of 3.75 out of five. So right down here for their price target. And analysts see as a low price target of $161 with their average of $233 with the current share price about $12 higher than their low price target. And over here as my own valuation, I was looking at once again, kind of a range of two to 5% for my revenue growth and matching these profit margin and free cash flow margin with the historic values here. A little lower on their PE and price to free cash flow. So instead of 14 through 18, I have a range of 13 to 17. Once again, the same 10% return rate. Right in here with the share price of $173, we are fairly above what my high price target is. I think Caterpillar is moving more into the fair value price range. I don't think it's just there yet, but it is becoming more valued day by day. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one stock I have in my portfolio. So I will be buying this stock eventually as the price target keeps coming down. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about Metatronic, Emerson Electric, and Caterpillar. Love to know if you have any of those on your watch list or even in your portfolio. And once again, remember I'm not a financial advisor, so definitely do your own due diligence before investing in any of these companies. For more great stocks to invest in this month, check out my latest video as well as other stock analysis right over here. Catch you in the next one. Peace.